A 36-year-old bachelor has been in many non-serious relationships, but he hasn't had a fateful encounter since his first love. He then decided to start dating again whenever he goes to work and sees all the different bright and beautiful ladies at work. He has led him to dislike older women. However, there is no possibility of dating because if he gets tangled up with the students, he will be in boiling water. But there is a girl that cares for him, and her name is Kim Yura. They had to meet together in the office, and they discussed it. After their discussions, Yura promised to visit him later, and she touched his arm. She discovered that they were tighter than she thought he was and thanked her. Two of the students came to deliver some questionnaires to him. He acknowledged their effort and told them they'd done outstanding jobs. When he was commending their efforts, he noticed that Yura was staring at him, and he said what's wrong? Why is she staring at him? She then asked him that as he was dating Miss Young. Kyung clarified to her that he had nothing to do with Miss Young. She had to jump to conclusions and asked whether she could take a break from the PE today. And then Kyung asked her why. Is she sick? She said she was sweating. Kyung said no. The hat was a nonsensical thing to say. She said, however, if she sweated, he could see her underwear. So could she rest? Kyung had no choice but to give her permission. Then she had to go. Kyung continued to stare at her. She stopped all of a sudden and called Kyung. He responded, and her response was if they don't get married. By the time they are 30, will the two of them get married again? Kyung was so surprised to hear that from her, and he feels removed and said what? Marriage. Yura asked him that didn't he wants to marry her, and he also had no choice but to accept her ideas. She was about to leave. Kyung called her, and she answered, but Kyung couldn't say what he wanted to say initially. He then said it was about the questionnaire. She did well bringing it to him, but that's all she could do to help him. He went into deep thought. His heart is complicated, but seeing himself liked by his student is okay. And the graduation ceremony is approaching. And he will bid farewell to Yura soon. Rather than comparing a student to a crush who disappeared without saying a word to him, shouldn't he be worried that they won't see each other again soon? He stood up and left on his way. And he heard one of the students call him and run after him. He then replied that the house was only two blocks away. She discovered it and asked him if he had been drinking. He said he had a drink without hesitating to hide anything from her. Since he is drunk, she said, can he carry her luggage? Her shoulder hurt so much that Kyung asked to hold her bag for her. But she said no, not the bag. Kyung looked at her and sensed a sign of diversion. He walked fast to ignore her, and she went quickly after him and tried to calm him. She said she made him mad. Kyung said no, but he wasn't paying attention to her. She called him to please look at her. She was only joking. He shouldn't ignore her. Kyung told her that the teachers were off work, so she should be quiet. He walked away and moved faster than expected. His thought was, that's the only thing he is good at, resisting temptation and going against a girl's wish. Yura called him Appa. He looked back and asked, did she call her teacher such a name? She moved closer to him and said she was only 20, but that doesn't have to do with his attitude, so can she tell him that she likes him? Kyung said what nonsense. Yura kept him shut and said he shouldn't know his answer now, then she pushed him away and said to see him later. She then repeated the name Appa. He was confused about what's going on. Yura said she liked him. Kyung addressed his student. They have suffered a great deal up to now, and he thought they'd do well, preparing to graduate this break. They have. He bid everyone farewell for a great break. Everyone departed and greeted him goodbye. But to meet on graduation day. But for Yura, who waited behind to see Kyung and wanted to converse with him as usual. Yura asked Kyung if he wanted to go on a date with her. Even though she was 20 years old, Kyung told her she was still his student in his response. Kyung replied to her and said that even though she was 20 years old and still his student, he walked out of her and said to have a good day. Yura was embarrassed, and she stood and stared at him as he went. Kyung was home alone when the doorbell dinged. He said yes. He then went to open the door, only to find out it was Yura. Who was at the door? Yura said hello. His response was, how did she find his house? Obviously when he left her in the school, she also trailed her home and found out where he lives. Kyung said okay, fine, so what's wrong? She requested to take her out on a date, but he had already told her no. He commanded her to go home and close the door at her. She knocked at the door again. Kyung wondered, and he went to the door again she repeated to take her out on a date. His response was still the same no and closed to the door at her. Again, she knocks at the door once more. Kyung was so frustrated and said didn't he said no and told her to stop coming back. Kyung closed the door on her again, but to his surprise, she knocked at the door again. He couldn't open it again. Kyung rested his back on the door without replying or opening to 
her, Yura said she knew that he was right at the door, but he should let go on a date. Kyung told her she was making it very difficult for him, she should be going home and never returning to his house again. A lot of time had gone by, and Kyung wondered as she went home. He had to take a look. Unfortunately, she hadn't left, she said only 20 minutes had passed, Kyung asked her. How long will she keep it up? And she responded that until he took her out on a date, she won't gobble him up again. Kyung said okay, they will only go once, she was so excited and happy. They both went out on a date, but on their way, she noticed that Kyung was covering his face, and she asked him why he had to cover his face. Kyung said if someone found out, he'll be beheaded. Yura held his arm and rested her head on his shoulder while they were walking. Kyung wondered what might be wrong with her. She said he was covering his face anyway. When they got to the place, they ordered food and started eating. Yura fed him first, and then Kyung fed her also. They took pictures together, and they were both happy. Yura stared at those pictures and said the pictures turned out great. She said Appa, look at these. Kyung said she shouldn't call him Appa, he is her teacher, but they are close enough to date, and when she graduates, is he going to get her flowers? Kyung said she is not the only one graduating, and does a teacher discriminate? She said he should get her a different gift, and Kyung said a different one. He said he was her teacher. Kyung walked fast and told her to come with him. At the graduation ceremony, after everything had been wrapped up, Yura asked Kyung, will he keep contacting her Appa? He said he had already told her not to call him Appa. She has graduated and is not an Appa student anymore. Kyung gave her a gift to congratulate her graduation, and he left her. She saw her mom, and she was surprised to see her because she had already told her she wouldn't be coming, but she had to come to her daughter's graduation. The blank will know the defeat. Yura was alone in her room, lying on the bed while she was checking on her previous pictures with Kyung. She was smiling as well, she said the pictures came out great. So much time has already passed. She decided to make an excuse to see Kyung and had to call him Appa now. She does things alone by herself, even at night, her mom comes to find her alone in the kitchen at night, and she tells her mom it's Valentine's Day, and she has to make chocolate. Her mom is surprised and guesses she has a boyfriend, she asked her who he is and is he handsome. Yura said he is not her boyfriend yet, but handsome, her mom also said she is head over heels even if he is not her boyfriend yet. Yura concluded anyway, he'll make him her boyfriend, and how will she make him? She said she has her ways, her mom wished her good luck, and she also had a time like that. Her mom asked to help her, and she said no, she would handle it herself. On Valentine's Day, Yura went to visit Kyung. She went with some gifts. He was surprised to see her and to have some gifts from her. Yura said she made them herself. Kyung thanked her and said she shouldn't have done that and he would surely eat it all. He didn't allow her in and continued the conversation. Yura told Appa again, won't he allow her in, or would he keep her waiting outside? After all, it was very cold outside. She needed to warm his hands, then he let her in. They were both seated in the sitting room beside each other Yura said he should try the chocolate. It was her first time making it, so she didn't know how it turned out. Kyung had to take from it. After eating it, he complimented her, it's really good. She was excited to hear that from him. Kyung asked her to try one too, and he fed her with the chocolate. Kyung said it had been a while since he got such a gift. He thanked her for that as well and he requested to buy her dinner if she didn't mind. It's okay by Yura. Yura came with the gift he gave her on her graduation day, and she said Appa gave her a gift also. Kyung said that suits her well. Yura said so, that's her graduation gift. Kyung replied to her and said of course. Yura then said she still hadn't received a college entry gift yet, but Kyung didn't think of that. Then he had to take her to get some food. He stood up and said they should, and he will get her something good. She held him back and asked to wait. Instead of food she threw him back on the chair. She displayed romantic and seductive body moves and said she needed a different gift from Appa. Kyung asked what kind of gift at that. She kissed him and said he was her gift. While kissing and being romantic, Kyung tried some control. He couldn't resist. He said she wanted a kiss as a gift. She lacked experience, but her lack of experience made it even more romantic. The kissing became deeper and more seductive. Kyung held her and tried to get her clothes off. He came back to his senses, and he said to wait. Yura asked what was wrong, and he said it was not that it was weird. But Yura likes Appa's mature figure, but she is an adult too, so it's okay not to hold back anymore. She pulled off her wares herself. Kyung said no, a teacher doing such a thing with a student is bad. Yura said they've already kissed, and he didn't say no to that, and now he realized he couldn't do it with a student. Kyung realized his body had already had an erection and no control. Yura asked him when she saw his body reacting to the romantic moves. What's it? His erected body part was already strong. 
He was confused and was asking Yura what was going on. Yura brought out his dick from his trouser, and she held it, romancing it. She asked him if he liked it the way she was doing it. Kyung said she should stop, and he couldn't take it. Yura said he could take it. Then would he be able to handle it if they did it a bit more? Yura continues to rob and romance his dick. She asks him again, does it feel good for him? Kyung couldn't pretend anymore. He pushed her onto the chair, pulled her pants off, and... They both had sex together, she told him to do it gently on her while she felt pain. He said he would do it slowly, then he asked her how she felt after doing it slowly, she told him that she feels better than a moment ago and is it good for him, because he is doing it with him. Kyung said to change positions, and he told her to let him know if it hurt again, Yura said it was different from before, it didn't hurt anymore, and she felt strange, she called Kyung's attention to it. She felt something weird. Kyung asked her, is it because it hurts? Yura said Op's thing was moving inside her, so it was a vulgar feeling. Kyung said now that she had mentioned it, more juice was coming out than before, and she was squeezing him tightly. He thinks he is coming, Yura says it's okay. He will come inside. Yura also told him that it hurt, but it felt like she was close to Appa, so it felt good. Kyung called her attention to her body, and she said to go wash up. But when she got up, she felt something strange. She said her legs felt weak. Then Kyung carried her to go wash her up. Kyung carried Yura to the bathroom. She asked him if he was going to wash her. Kyung said yes, he will. And he cleaned her up. They started another romance in the bathroom. Yura said she had to wash him too. She called his attention and said he just came. And he was already in that way. She held his dick again in the bathroom. Kyung wondered and asked her if she could take some more. Yura said it looks like it's Kyung that's in pain. She asked him what she can do to make him feel good. Kyung decided and told her he would show her how to do it with her mouth, but Yura already knelt on her knees and done an example herself. Kyung confirmed that's how to do it and can she put it in her mouth and asked suck it. But she did as well and asked him, is it okay the way she's doing it? Yes, he feels good about it. Yura felt the teacher thing flinching. And if she made him feel a little better, she made it deep in her mouth and deeper. But that seemed to be her first time. She coughed, Yura, are you alright? She shouldn't force herself too much and use her mouth from the tip. She did it the normal way she knows. She asked him if it was good again the way she does it. But to Kyung, it felt better, Yura. Continued to suck until he started coming. And he told her that he was coming. Already, she then took her mouth away. He poured it out, she asked if that good, the why both showered and got dressed. She was about to leave Kyung told her, isn't it too late? She said it's fine, and she anticipated staying through the night, but Kyung didn't teach her to do anything so rash. She didn't care, all she says is she was her girlfriend now, and she was not a student. Anymore, she pleaded him to always see her as a woman that was like a student begging. Him a moment ago, Yura said to get back home safely, and she went on her way. While he stared at Yura, his phone rang, and a lady sent him a message, How are you, Sari? That's Yura's mom. She had lived in the house next door since birth, and they were childhood friends. Naturally, Sari was Kyung's first love, and he was convinced that Sari wouldn't change her mind. Sari and Kyung met again, and it was very nice for them to see each other again. Yura called him Kyungsu, and she said it had been a while. She sat right in front of him. Kyung asked how she had been doing. She is doing well, and Kyung has been doing well. When she was 16, Kyung asked her when she had Yura, and she didn't contact Kyung when that happened. Sari said it was in the past, and Kyung asked what she called him there. Sari said they were both friends, she reached out to him because she wanted to see him, it was a bit cold. And how about they both take a walk? They both agreed to have a walk, while they were walking, she said they used to walk around like that before. And she was happy, Kyung said. She was surprised to hear that from him and asked him if he didn't feel that way also. Kyung said he didn't feel that way. But it was a good memory for Sari. Kyung asked to go to the motel, and when they got there, Kyung sat on the bed. When Sari went for a shower, he thought of what happened between them for about 16 years till then. He was also thinking of why she had come with him so easily. She came outside from the bathroom and told Kyung to get a shower, too. Kyung Su didn't go for a shower, and he did not hold back on her. He pushed her to the bed and lay on her, staring at her face. Sari said that he should do whatever he wanted if that resolved his feelings. Kyung held her breast romantically, and he started sucking in until he started pulling her. Clothes, Sari was so surprised, but they kissed continuously. Kyung took his hand slowly to her pussy and he deep his hand into her part romantically. Sari said he is too intense. He should stop. Kyung stopped and stared at her. She looked away and said he should not stare at her again. What he did to her was embarrassing. 
Kyung held her again, wanting to have sex with her. But he thought about what she might have said. Seri said he should not hold back. Kyung held himself back and didn't do anything with her. She was surprised and asked him what had happened. Kyung said he thought he had made a mistake. Seri was okay with what he wanted to do with her, and if she resolved his feelings, she was okay with it. He said he had seen someone and he didn't look back at her and he went his way. Seri asked can she contact him again. And she was not asking for much. He should talk to her as a friend. Kyung said she should do as pleased. And he left her. Yura and Kyung went to a PlayStation where they both wanted to have their day. And they watched movies together and had some snacks, drinks, and breakfasts. While they had a delicious Milo, Kyung felt remorse. Yura noticed and asked him what might be wrong. But he said nothing. Yura noticed he had been spacing out lately some. Days back. He guessed it because he was busy preparing for school. It's okay she shouldn't worry too much. Yura did some research to make Kyung feel good about her. She asked Kyung if that was not true. He laughed at her. And she asked why he was laughing. Kyung hugged her. And they both felt happy. Yura said she was only worried about Appa. Kyung replied. She didn't have to be worried because she always cheered him up. Yura still didn't allow him to divert her attention from touching her chest. And she is not wearing any underwear. Kyung was so surprised to hear that. He did touch her breast romantically. Until he sucks her nipples. He stopped and told Yura there was something he wanted to do. Yura replied that he wanted her to do it without knowing or asking what he was about to do. He said, surprisingly, which did she want to do? Kyung oiled her nipples and brought out his dick. Yura asked, can she do it with her breast? Yura robbed his dick after his erection, and she massaged it with her breast. She asked if that was okay with him, and Kyung said to keep it up. Doing it on the chest and shaking it all the time. She feels good. She continues with it and sucks his dick. At the same time, she asks if he is feeling good and okay with what she is doing. Not until Kyung come in her mouth while they were at the scene. And she asked again if he was satisfied. Kyung was obsessed and carried her to the room and dropped her on the bed. And then he pulled off his clothes. Yura asked him what might be wrong and what was going on with him. Kyung said Yura had done that for him and he can't reciprocate he pulled off her clothes and her pant yura was wondering what he is up to kyung starts to massage and sucks her pussy passionately yura said she felt embarrassed with what he was doing with her but at the same time she enjoyed it instantly she asked him to wait and she said no way that would be weird if he continued then kyung brought out his dick and said he thought he was about to explode yura told him to be gentle with her they started to have sex yura said appa's thing was still too much but it didn't hurt her as much compared to the last time they had sex together, rather it was starting to feel good. Kyung asked her if he could move a bit faster. Yura said no, this time around she wants to do it on top. They continued with it, and she told Kyung that it's too deep. Kyung removed it from her pussy, and Yura called him professor. Kyung told her that when he looked at her, he also lost control of himself, and they continued kissing and having sex simultaneously. Kyung said he was about to come. And Yura also said she was going to come. After they both came and were relieved, they had to relax. And Yura was so addicted to having sex all the time. After everything, Yura went back home. The following day Yura got dressed, getting prepared for orientation. After putting on her outfit, she went and asked her mom how the outfit looked on her body and if it was pretty. For her to mix in and make new friends at the orientation. Her mom guessed on the outfit, not just to make new friends but a boyfriend too, perhaps. But she already has one so she shouldn't worry. Her mom was so surprised and was excited to know who that was. She asked Yura if the boyfriend gets her chocolates and is he nice, but it's a secret to Yura. Yura got to the orientation center, and before the orientation should commence, the dean gave a few words to the audience. The dean greeted the new students first and then introduced himself. His name was Bayan Tiang. The history of education is also the history of man, says Mr. Bayon. Yura and Kyung were seated by each other at the orientation center until they all went for the break. While they were having their break, about five of them were seated together, Yura Kyung and three others. One of the three asked a question, generally, and expected everybody's response. She asked what reason they had that made them decide to go for a college of education. One said he was there because his parents were professors. Kyung said he just liked the kids there. And the third person said it's a stable career for him. Yura was fidgeting. And everyone awaited her response. Then she was asked personally if there is a special reason. For her, she told everyone. She fell in love with a teacher. Everybody was surprised to hear that from her. And one of them said she came to a teacher's college because she fell for a teacher. How romantic. That's like a drama show. Kyung stares at her unexpectedly, and surprisingly, after a while, Yura's mood changes suddenly, and she is asked what might be wrong. 
she is not feeling so good, and she has to go home. Jin Young decided to call a cab for her to go home. Kyung said she shouldn't do that. Wouldn't it be dangerous for a drunk woman to ride in a taxi alone? And everyone agreed not to let her go alone. And she was asked, she was asked if she happened to have anyone to take her home. Yura couldn't respond because she was so drunk. Kyung said it was obvious that her first time drinking. Kyung went to think of how to get Yura to himself and if they see her with an older guy. Who knows what kind of rumors will spread. Kyung was so tricky and cunning that he took his phone to call a friend to fool people around so they could think he had called someone to take Yura back home. Yura was too drunk and was held so she wouldn't fall. Kyung said to hold on, and he would get a hangover drink for her. Kyung disguised himself as a relative who was to pick her up. He said he was here to get Yura because she was drunk Sunabi wasn't distracted. She asked if he was someone close to Yura, and why is he covering his face so he shouldn't come any closer. Kyung said that was a misunderstanding. He only got a call from Yura, Yura recognized him and knew all the tricks. She called him Appa and asked why he had come so late. Sunabi apologized for questioning him. First, Kyung said no worries, it's possible for one to get the wrong idea. Is there anything else she would like to say? But she also looks drunk and takes her leave. Sunabi was wondering and asking if that's her boyfriend and if she is not going home with such an innocent face. That's crazy. Kyung told Yura she had to go home right away. But she did not want to go. Kyung asked her that as she was going to make her mother worry about her. She then asked him if she had to go home. Kyung said yes, they can both hang out next time. Yura then asked if they could could go to Appa's place or if he didn't want to be with her. Of course, he wants to be with her, Yura said. Then can they both stay together or should they go to her house together? Kyung was worried about her mom. Yura said he shouldn't worry. When they locked the door, her mom would never know. And while she was talking, she unzipped Kyung's trousers and romancing his penis. But they were almost get caught by someone. They both hide at a corner. Yura didn't stop romancing and sucking his penis. Kyung asked what she thought she was doing and what if he got caught. She did not mind and continued to suck his dick. Yura said Kyung couldn't return home because he already had a strong erection. Kyung asked Yura, did anything ever happen today? She said nothing had happened. Kyung took off her hands and told her they needed to leave and go somewhere else. She also said no, she doesn't want to go somewhere else, or can't he stand it. She pulled up her wear, which were already wet, and asked him if he could resist her. Yura turned her back to him and stretched her boots for sex. Kyung tore her pants from the back. She said Kyung was too rough and so sexy. Kyung asked her when she had become such a naughty kid. She didn't know either, but she learned everything from him. Kyung was already sexing her while she held the wall, and they continued. All of a sudden, Yura asked him to stop. She was about to come, but Kyung couldn't stop anymore, and he continued passionately. Yura asked why wouldn't he stop after a while. He then stopped, and they kissed themselves. Yura said her legs are still shaking. He asked her that does it hurt? Yura said no, rather it was great. Kyung went to the office the following day. After lectures in the class, he went back to his office. The principal came to him and asked if he had spoken with the other teachers. He didn't know the teaching practice was starting that day. He was told to come over and say hello to the teacher. When he got to the office where they were, he greeted them, and they all responded to him. It was very nice to meet each other. The principal addressed them and said Kyung soon would be in charge. One of them was Jin Young. She came to him and thanked him for taking care of her previously. They knew each other and continued staring at each other. The principal had to interrupt, and he asked Kyung what was wrong with his face. Nothing was wrong with his face. Kyung said he would be in her care of her then. They both went around the classes, introducing her and getting her details down. Kyung told her the first day is usually uncomfortable, not to mention the compulsory company dinner, but she should not mind, she can have as much meat as she would like. We were thankful to him. Kyung has been losing his authority as a teacher lately, but there is no such thing as a stable professional job with paid leave, except when the kids get you into trouble, so everyone has to keep distance from them. One of the new teachers asked, where are all the hot-blooded teachers in this day and age? Jin Young then replied to him that isn't it important to maintain their sense of duty. Though, everyone stared at her, but what she was trying to pass across means, it is a job that deals with the lives of students. Kyung shunned her and said she didn't know anything because she was still a student. Did she know how much those kids go out when you become a teacher by profession? Where is the sense of duty in that? Kyung cares to tell them more about that. Kyung then asked them why they were doing what they were doing when they both knew everything about their job and what teachers were like these days. And one of the new teachers, named Kang Il, said, But it is still not a sense of duty, rather, he is educating his kids with a sense of responsibility. 
Kyung said he had a point in saying that. Compared to before, their teaching authority could be stronger because the concept of the profession rather than education is becoming more widespread than ever. Kyung also thinks what Miss Jin Young said is right. Teachers who care about their students are not bad either. Jin Young asked him if they'd met before. Kyung had not met her before either and thought he was doing well because she didn't say anything or did he speak too much. Jin Young asked Kyung again if he was sure they hadn't met before, but Kyung didn't think so either. They all had a walk after dinner and departed. They greeted each other and thanked themselves for coming. Jin Young held and supported Kyung to Mr. Kang Il and told him Kyung was drunk. Mr. Kung said since she is a teacher with a professional outlook, she should please take good care of him, and he went on his way. Jin Young called Kyung, he should please wake up, but he couldn't respond, she thought of what to do and she came up with the idea of taking his phone to call someone to get him home. She told the person they had a company dinner party, and Mr. Kyung Su was heavily drunk. The name of the location is Wehenstefan. Wehenstefan is a name of beer brewed locally in Germany in a place called Wehenstefan Hill in Freising, and that's one of the world's oldest breweries ever. While they were both waiting, after some minutes, a lady was driving. She said she came to pick Kyung back home. Jin Young asked her if she was the one she spoke to on the call. She replied that didn't she say that she was a school teacher, that was right. Then they both moved closer to Kyung, and Jin Young said he should get up to start going. Home. He did not answer her, the lady who came to pick her up said she shouldn't worry. She would wake him up herself, she also called Kyung and said he has to go home. She supported him to the car by herself, she was thankful to Jin Young, and they took their leave. Jin Young was relieved, she said she finally sent him off and was that his girlfriend. Good people already have their loved ones. When they got home, she had to carry Kyung alone to the room, but it wasn't easy for her. She said he was so heavy that she almost died. She looked into his face and asked him how much he got drunk. He'll never sober up in that manner. She tapped him on his face. And he woke up. She was surprised. Kyung asked her when she had come back and why is she talking down to her oppa. She said she didn't. But Kyung told her she was in trouble and kissed her for some while. She got up and went to undress, she then zipped down Kyung's trouser, started sucking his dick. Yura continued to suck and massage her pussy. Kyung didn't respond anymore, just on his rest. While Yura was in charge of the whole thing, Sari was in a saloon and was bored and wondered about her daughter Yura when she was struggling to raise Yura by herself. Yura and Kyung were still together. Kyung and Yura rode on a bicycle. Yura asked him if it was hard for him to ride on the bicycle. She would prefer walking, but it's a piece of cake too. Kyung. Yura asked him why he was always so good to her. Kyung also replied her with the question, asking her why she decides on getting married. She was surprised to hear the such question from him. But that is only if they don't get married by the time they reach 30. All this was her imaginations. She feels connected to Kyung and wants to move faster, and she can't resist touching him. But because he hasn't woken up once since she came there, that will be okay. And what if he wakes up? What would he think of her? She can't stop moving because she loves it. Yura looked at his face and called his name. He should never forget he was always in her heart. She pulled herself to remove the dick from her pussy, but it hurt her so much that she screamed because of the pain, and they both slept off. The following day he met with Jin Young, and they both had breakfast. She asked how he felt and if he felt better after getting himself drunk last night. He thought he wanted to die after he got himself drunk. He asked her if she knew how he landed there, he said when. He woke up the following day, he was alone in a hotel, Jin Young asked if his girlfriend didn't take him there that night because she was the one who had to pick him up. She describes the person who came to pick him up. Kyung was so glad that it wasn't Yura who came to pick him up and then told Jin Young she was not his girlfriend. He recalled it was Seri who came to pick her up and take care of him. Jin Young wondered in herself why Kyung didn't have a girlfriend. Yura and Jin Young met together at the school. Yura asked her where is the school she worked and if the distance was long for her. Jin Young told her it was at the top of the Toon Girls School, and it was perfect for her. Yura was glad to hear and to tell her she went to Toon Girls School also and all the teachers at the school are nice. And did she like it there? Jin Young said it's good, but there's so much to do because time flies too fast. Yura guessed she seemed to be doing well. Young replied that she had a good teacher taking care of her, and he managed somehow. Yura was so glad it was a male teacher. Jin Yaug said yes, it was a male teacher that was taking care of her. Yura asked if that was going well. Jin Young said no, but because he is a very mature person, he is going to think she is a child. Yura replied curiously that it doesn't matter, she can overcome that. How? Yura said told her to use the Yukton technique on Nai. The Yukton is a term for charging ahead at the enemy and has a sexual meaning. 
but Jin Young and the teacher have never met, and Jin Young doesn't think they can have time to meet. Yura said they could both meet at school. She was surprised and asked how they do that in the school and how far ahead she is she is imagining things. Yura came to the school on purpose, and the purpose was to see Kyung. Kyung asked her why she wanted to meet all of a sudden and what if someone saw them. Yura said now that she had graduated, she sort of missed the school, and she asked if Appa miss it too, and she was trying to pull his trouser. Kyung rejected her and told her she couldn't do such a thing outside there. Yura suggested they should go into one of the old classrooms. But the second and the third years are studying after school so that they can go into the first year classroom. They both went there. Yura was amazed she came into the classroom again. It's been a well since she came into a classroom. She called Kyung's name to mimic him and told him he was late. But he could have a seat. He should hurry up and sit down, Kyung said. Yes, teacher. She also asked why he was late. Kyung said he lost track of time thinking about his girlfriend. Yura guessed his girlfriend must be very beautiful. However, being late is still late. Yura already sat on his lap and said she wanted to punish him, but she didn't think of punishment initially. Kyung said then they should swap roles, and if she did something wrong, she should be punished. Kyung asked her to stand up with her hands raised. Kyung unloses her bee restitin, and she can't lower her arms because she is on punishment, and if she doesn't listen, he will scold her. Kyung already wants to cuck her breast. Kyung romance her breast and her buttocks, sucking her breast. Yura wanted to do it. Initially while getting punished, when Yura was lowering her hands, Kyung said they didn't tell her not to lower her arms, so she should get ready for even harsher punishment. He brought out his penis for the harsher punishment. When Yura said that yes she wants him to punish her, Kyung sexed her with another different style. He raised one of her legs and put his dick in. Her pussy, Kyung asked her if she was not enjoying the punishment too much, Yura loved everything he did to her, and he then decided to change the style, bending her back and sexing her from the back. While watching porn, she always wonders why they smack the butt, but the burning sensation is better than what she anticipated. A security man was going around the school premises with a touch light on his hand. Yura and Kyung were both distracted. The man checks classes to see what's going on in the classes. Yura asked who was there. Kyung guessed it's the school guard. But if they stayed still, he wouldn't notice if they were there. Yura said, won't it be a big problem if they get caught? Yura pushed and continued to have sex with Kyung. That was what called the guards. Attention, Yura said Kyung should just stay quiet. Kyung sucked her nipples and had sex. With her passionately, Yura loved it so much that she couldn't hold back her voice. Any more so if he comes back because of their noise it will be a problem. Kyung too can't hold back anymore and he doesn't care what happens. He then gives her hard fuck, Yura. Then said that's her first time he would see a teacher who is exited like Kyung, she told. Kyung that he looks like a pervert. Kyung said to her too that she is not also less than a pervert. She loves to get slaps on the butt. Kyung is getting excited about getting caught by the guard, and she also can't stop moaning. She thinks they watch well because of their professionalism. They ended everything after a while after they started without much thought, and it would have been a big problem if they were caught. Yura said he still liked it, and she felt like they were back in time, like she was dating her teacher. Kyung also felt great about it. Then they should return to school again some other time. Kyung still had some work to do, and it was raining. Kyung gave his umbrella to Yura because there were spares in the teacher's lobby. Then she went first. After some time, Kyung also had to leave. He noticed no more umbrellas in the teacher's lobby. It's fine as long as Yura doesn't get rained on. 